It is 9.13. Okay, we'll wait two more minutes. Go ahead and mute us back again. Okay, Leah, are we ready to go or are we still waiting on somebody? Uh, you know what, Bethany, it looks like we're still waiting on staff, um, but I did send her a text, so she should be on in just a sec. Okay. Um, so it's you past 9 15. Do you wanna do you wanna do introductions and and actually um just do the basic start of the meeting or did let you me want... go ahead and get the meeting started and then you can go ahead and introduce your staff. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So um, I'm going to call the uh, central board of architectural review meeting of August 20th, 2021 to order. Um, well, this is a zoom hearing. Um, Leah, you wanted to go ahead and introduce you have a new so we have Jonathan Martin here for, with us today, and he's been with the county for maybe about four months. Uh, four months now. Um, so he's new to our hearing support team, and he's going to be helping us out with, um, you know, coverage for meetings and uh, taking care of noticing and all that fun stuff. Uh, but I'll let him give himself a little bit of an introduction. Hi, everybody. I'm Jonathan Martin. I just started with the county about four months ago and learning a lot and hope to learn a lot through this meeting as well. So thank you for having me. All right. Um, okay, so um, let's go ahead and start. Um, do we have any members of the public who wish to address the board um, about items that are not on today's agenda? So at this time, if you would like to speak on an item that isn't on today's agenda, go ahead and use the raise your hand feature. It looks like we have two attendees for today's meeting. So click over to the other tab. There we go. And if we don't see any hands, then we just say, Madam Chair, we do not have any requests to speak. Okay. Um, would you like to do the agenda status report? Uh, Madam Chair, we do not have any changes to today's standard agenda. 
All right, let's take a look at the minutes of July 16th, 2021. Um, and I'll go ahead and bring those up if you give me a second. Okay. Do we have Nicole? Yes, I am here. Hey, perfect. Thanks, Good everybody. To so to speak. <laughs> okay, um, I I'll start it off. Uh, the only thing I had was um, this is an excellent set of minutes. Um, and, and I don't have anything to add to any of the actual notes. It's just this um, this vote at the very end. Four to zero. Could you please stipulate who was absent, just like you have for all the others? Leah, you... Chair, this is Robin, and I was not absent, and it shows that I was absent. Okay. At the top. Yes, yes. it does, because she was there. You are correct. Um, was that the only change that we needed to that, to the attendance? So then my question is, is that vote count correct? Or are you thinking that, because um, I was back in, uh, you know, I had a conflict of interest on item three, so I initially wasn't present, but then I was. Um, I know Alan was absent, but that still leaves us with five. Um, Madam Chair. Yes. Um, this is Cass. Uh, wasn't um, Brett? Brett was not. Man, the, Cass, I can add there are seven members of the board, six were present. Alan left, that leaves five. Okay, my apologies. Um, no worries, I just wanted to, I don't wanna to spend too much time on this. I just wanna uh, get it changed that, if it needs to be changed and move on. Speaking yeah, of that, um, do we need to have, who all is present here today? Uh, that, just hold on a second. I don't wanna deal with that, I wanna deal with the minutes. Can, Beth, can I think you're correct, it is, I think it should be five to zero to address. Okay. That's my only comment. Does anyone have any comments on any other portion of the minutes? Madam Chair, I have some questions. Um, okay. I, I wanted to ask um, on the item number five, uh, the list of all the questions in the discussion that we had that will be going to the joint chairs. Um, when will that information be um, That's not appropriate at this time. Uh, okay. If we can come back to that um, and BAR comments under our, uh, our, our agenda. Do you have anything that has to do with this minutes or is this accurate of last meeting? Um, I had a few little adjustments, okay. but I don't know. That, I don't think they're that important. Um, I can just leave it if you're wanting to. No, I, I want to get to your little adjustments. Okay. Um, on the first item, yes. I think um, I would suggest, if I could, um, that on number one, just um, at the lead end of the sentence, appreciates that the overall use of the property um, is limited for more open space. Just a slight adjustment to the wording. Okay. Um, number two, color palette seems dark overall. Um, number th four, um, gate design could be more rural slash barn-like to match aesthetic of the home, period. Very nice. And there is a typo. In yes. Simplified. simplified. <laughs> and hold um, on, hold on, wait. Sorry. Gate design could be more rural barn like to match aesthetic of the home. Period. And that's okay. Placing the language about being disconnected. Yeah, just right. take all that out. Yep. 
restate and, that. And then what about it does not seem like an entrance to a ranch? I, I would delete that. Okay. And then. Uh, and then the, um, I thought that um, number three and number five are both speaking, addressing the lighting. So we just combine those two together and okay. say um, quantity of lighting. Um, you could just put that in, in the start it, uh, of number five, don't you think? Yes. Yeah, that's what I'll do. And I would just say a quantity of lighting is excessive. Place lighting only where required at doors and as well or something. I think quantity of lighting is excessive. Um, it was agreed that light fixtures um, to be removed except and then leave it at that. Okay. Okay. Does that sound good? Yes. All right, number two. Okay. And then um, I'm like, it was a question on the um, number two, Midland School. Yeah. I believe this was pulled and that we did not review it at all. We didn't. Uh, okay, well, I don't know what the proper, it just says continued. So is that- That's you... because it was taken care of in the uh, agenda status report. Okay, so it isn't just, um, yeah, I'm not familiar with, you know, how that is. Going. Well, if you I, look. It, 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 it seems like uh, the way it's stated. That see we right here. reviewed it, but it, that it was. Um, see right here. Agenda status report, Chair Clough moves, seconded by Member Lash by a vote of 5-0 to continue item to the August 18th, 2021 agenda. I, I agree, okay. it's disconnected, but okay. this is how they've done it forever. Okay, well so. then been done forever then it must be good no it mustn't but <laughs> it okay. is it is a pattern <laughs> my, my final comment on number three uh is on number and are, are you ready for this um i don't, I don't know <laughs> no it's just very simple um oh, i am yeah one, number one i just would say the design the board appreciated the design as appropriate for the site and take is handsome and remove that and just say the board appreciated the design as appropriate for the site. Okay. Um, and then do we, sh on number three, do they show it on the plans and the elevations or maybe it was on the plans and we were just asking them to please include it on the elevations as well. So I was just going to say show lighting on elevations and plans. Although they maybe already did put it on the plan. Okay. I didn't go back to check that. And that was all of my comments. Thank you. Okay. I could have answered that question, but I have a conflict. And so I'm not saying anything. Uh, anyone else have any other um, comments on the minutes? I would entertain a motion. I'll move to approve the minutes. Second. Oh, that was that was a quick second. First and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so I think we have everybody but Brett here today. So we need to decide, um, Alan and Lowell, which one of you wants to vote today? I think it's Alan's turn today. Okay. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go back to um, our agenda. Okay, so we've got the minutes done. Okay, CBAR members, informational briefings. Cass, ask your question. Oh, no, I just was wondering where, you know, could just give us an update on what goes on with that. And um, okay, I we, will. We had an extensive discussion and lots of comments. So I just am curious as to where it did not goes. disappear down a deep, dark rabbit hole. That's what I was hoping didn't happen. <laughs> well, in this case, all of our finger crossings must have worked. Um, we went to the meeting. Um, they had um, had uh, a lot of submissions to the BARs. They'd asked the BARs for, you know, uh, a whole bunch of BAR concerns. And so what went to the joint chairs, uh, actually, I think it was a continuation of a discussion, um, wound up being more than anything. But our list was fairly all-encompassing and arriving as it did 
fairly late, they've decided that the joint chairs decided to hold a, a special hearing. Um, and it will, hasn't been set yet, date has not been set, but it will most likely be right here at the end of August. Um, just to go over um, that long laundry list that we sent them. So there isn't anything else to report about that yet because we haven't talked about it. Both Puck and I will be in attendance at that hearing or we plan to at, at this point. Um, there can only be two of us. So we will come back in hopefully in September and be able to fill you in on the direction the discussion took at Joint chairs. Um, and the, could, I, could I ask? Uh, is is that a um, public meeting? And yes. Is it uh, recorded? Yep. So um, if 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 any of us want to um, observe and hear the, hear the discussion, um, you, you know. would need to do so. Uh, I'm pretty sure that, and county council could probably interpret this better but as i said if three people are present from the bar it becomes a meeting of the bar because we have a quorum so can we can we find out whether or not uh i i i can ask uh david or leah can ask david or jonathan can ask david and hearing support um what would be the best way to um, do that. I don't know if it's also broadcast on on YouTube. Um, I don't know how they do it, but it is a public hearing. Um, and I know there is a recording. Um, and in theory, I'm sure that would be available. So it's just a question of how we do that. Okay, well, I would be very interested in getting a link to that meeting if that's possible. And hearing whether or not well what i what i'm telling you is is if it's a zoom meeting and you attend the zoom meeting we now have a quorum that can't happen we, and we can't be a, a, an observer just to hear the meeting also well this is where it goes down the rabbit hole county council i would suggest you contact them okay. and right. discuss with them the best way to handle it and then work with hearing support we have a week <laughs> okay thank you okay yep. about 10 days to figure and it thank out you, thank you to both uh bethany and puck for um you know for for um moving us forward and representing us really appreciate it okay um the other thing was a discussion about um when we would go live again of course the delta variant has in the interim kind of grabbed us all by the throat again um, however, the last thing I heard was that they were trying for September. Um, I don't know what current plans are now in the county with um, the current COVID status and everything. I do know that they're still working forward towards that and, and preparing for it so that they can hit the ground running, hopefully. Um, the other thing was, is given um, the level of technology and everything else, um, there was some discussion about um, whether um, meetings moving forward, in-person meetings moving forward um, would provide um, Zoom or other um, digital uh, attendance opportunities moving forward. And, um, just about there's I, I don't know they told us in in joint chairs how many it was but a number of counties and jurisdictions have already petitioned the state to be able to there's already work at the state level they're already trying uh, moving forward with crafting a change to the law to allow public attendance and so that begged the question of everybody uh, certainly myself was hey if public can attend that way then could we have a provision in some form or another for somebody to attend who was a board member? Um, and I think I'm pretty sure that the state law does not want um, a quorum to be, um, you know, everybody attending, you know, you know, they don't want an applicant to walk into a hearing room and see a dais with empty people with empty, you know, seats. 
So um, I think they want people in person as much as possible. So I don't know how that's going to happen, but it has been asked at the state level. There are a number of municipalities and, and interested parties who wish to provide some provision for um, a, a portion of the board or some members of the board to be able to attend via um, electronic means. So we will keep you apprised as that moves forward. If I hear anything else. Um, that's it for me. Does anybody else have anything to add for member informational briefings? Okay, um, any member recusals today for Nash residents or Midland School? Okay, staff update. Okay, just unmuting there. Um, I don't have much to update. Um, there's not much happening in the central area as far as hearings upcoming. Um, just sort of looking at the upcoming hearings, there's not really anything in, in the general vicinity of CBAR or even near you until October 6th. And there's a um, appeal of the Orcutt gas station going to the planning commission on that date. Um, okay. And uh, I guess the other update is that starting at our next meeting, um, I'm going to be an, taking a position as an interim supervisor. So my title will change. Um, well, congratulations. All, thank you. Um, and that's, that's all I have for today. What, what is, is this a, you said it's interim. Does that, are you? Um, it's provisional. And then we're, we'll see what happens. <laughs> well, way to go. Congratulations, Thanks. Nicole. Thanks. And, and you're not leaving us, right? I'm not leaving. Oh, good. <laughs> we do like you. No, no one on the sea bar can leave. None of you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You got it. Uh -huh. um, uh, the, this uh, sea bar discussion items, Leah, could you please make a note that that was um, a holdover from the other, that long list we sent to the joint chairs. And I think we could probably take that back out of here for now. Will do. Okay, thank you. Um, no consent agenda. So we're up to the standard agenda. Um, uh, you, Leah, have, can you um, get with, I think it's Rob, Mel, and um, the applicant and see who wants to share screen and all that good stuff. Um, this is item number one, 21 bar, 00014 Nash residence. And uh, I think, oh, well, all right. I'm going to quit sharing my screen. Hey, Ross, who from your team would like to um, go ahead and start presenting? I believe I'm going to. It's Mary Nash. Awesome. Give us just a second. We'll get <laughs> and as soon as Mary can bring it up, um, I'll start the description of the project. Nicole, if while we wait for that, if you could read the comments from last time since i can't bring um, them up it won't come up on my screen let me ask leah are you able to do that today by chance i don't know if she's there oh, um, um give us just a sec we'll get it open in just a sec okay because i can't i can't get it. it it won't um let me see oh no okay i got them uh for the nash residents Yes, please. Okay. Uh, supportive of the project and changes that have been made in response to prior comments. Show any proposed landscape on sheet A10, including if it is just hydro seeding in response to grading work. Show topo lines on all site plans. And it received preliminary approval.
Mary, have you started sharing your screen? There we go. Thank you. All Thank right, you. Rob, if you could be um, walk us through any of the uh, attention to comments and the general project and we'll sure. put this show on the road. And we'll keep it kind of brief because there hasn't been much in the way of change to this. So Mary, if we could move on there to probably the topo plan survey. Do you have the um, page number? Um, I will in a moment. We can go to A1.0. A1.0. Correct. Is that it? Oh, A1.0 site plan. It's the plot plan, actually, 1.0. Plot plan, oh, okay. okay. Wonder what uh, percentage yeah. works best. <laughs> there you go, there you go. So this plot plan are showing the boundaries of the project and the new residents placed on the existing topo. And from here, we can move right along to a 1.1, which is our site plan. And on this, we see areas for landscaping defined. Um, the easiest one to point out to you would be on the right side of the building. And there's a looping line along that. That's a border line to landscaping adjacent to the building and to the natural conditions that exist out there today. And we follow that all the way around the building, except in the front of the garage, uh, showing these landscaped areas. We also, in the notations, which we don't have to go to right here, Mary, uh, we indicate that any disturbed area will be hydro seeded. And from this, we can move on once again to a 2.1, which is the floor plan, which I'll be very brief on. And that's on the, um, we call the area to the right, the guest room area or pavilion. And the sitting room area is adjacent to that. And to get from there to the great room, we've added another uh, foot in rise there. So very little change there. We can move on from that to our roof plan, A3.1. When you say a foot and rise, could you please be specific? Are you talking about on the floor level or the roof level or what do we think? If, if you were in the living room, it used to be you would step down two risers. So you would be a foot lower than the finished floor of it. Now we're stepping down an additional one foot to get to the sitting room level. Okay. So we, we can move on to a 3.1, the roof plan. And there was a small revision near the sitting room area, which is denoted by the word flat. And it's, yes, that's the area. And just to the left of that, we refined the way the roof sheds down over this area. Um, we also added another tiny pyramid to the very roof cap in the middle of the great room, which you see there dimensioning 40 by 40. And you'll see that on the elevations in a moment. So then if we can go to, um, well, sections are next to 3.2. And that only reflects the, the floor levels there that we, we drop down the sitting room a little bit further. Um, we can then go to a 4.1, the elevations. And on the elevations, you now see the little pyramid roof cap on top of the central pyramid on this west elevation. And of course, it also appears on others. You also 
uh, would have to compare it because it's very subtle with earlier plans to find out that we have dropped that guest wing down. Uh, we've lowered another foot beyond what it was. And then I think finally on this, we can go to details on D1. We will be coming back to this in regard to colors and materials. D1 on the far left, we show our chimney cap detail. Moving to the right, we have, and this has been shown before, our typical roof eave, hopefully to prevent sparrows from nesting there. If we drop down one bay here, we have our typical window detail. And I think we have another one below that, which is our light detail, which occurs in a number of spots. And um, oh, we can also go to L1, which calls out the landscaping limitations a little bit better. Uh, looks pretty much the same, but it's easier to read than the other one was. And um, in conversation with Tina, who couldn't be present this morning, we are gonna be providing uh, irrigation details for this. And we're gonna be providing to her gallonage. She said we didn't need it for this meeting, but she would want to see that. And this also shows pathways around the area. And um, that's pretty much it, except uh, Mary, if you could, we can go back to the elevations. And that's a 4.1 and we can, um, yeah, there we go. And um, Mary and Mike are gonna talk about the colors of the building and maybe the finish to the stucco and the materials. Uh, materials basically I'll go over their metal roofs, stucco exteriors, and occasionally the wooden beam as we see on the east elevation. Um, uh, in the central pyramid to the right of the arched area. And that was, we have a number of wooden beams cutting across. So Mike and Mary, if you can, yes, if you can go back over this and I don't think we've even changed anything from the last. Um, yeah, we haven't made any changes. The, the, you know, I think the, the, the biggest thing that you're gonna see is the rough and we've tried to choose a color that kind of blends in well with our surroundings with that hemlock green and that you know the metal metal roof um smooth stucco on the outside to keep the keep the building clean as we can um, some you know very neutral colors that we've chosen for the stucco not much more yet santa barbara stone for the, the stonework around the base all, all what we shared before Any questions? Uh, does that complete your uh, presentation? It does, Bethany. OK, perfect. Um, so uh, before I call public comment, I'm going to ask if there are any questions of clarification from the board. I, I just had one question um, about the pool. Maybe I'm not seeing the plans correctly. Could you go back to the site plan? Which, um, Rob, which one is that? Yeah, and by the way, the pool is going to be under separate permit. Oh, okay. Um, but still, it's trying to, she's trying to understand, and that's a good light there. Yeah. So, so I'm just, this is, as it, as you noted, it's under separate permit, but the pool is against the house or? Correct. That is correct. Against the porch yeah, yeah. columns. Against the porch. Yeah. Okay. So, well, that'll be interesting. <laughs> In, mm -hmm. Any other questions? Uh, yes, I have a couple questions. Okay, Cass. Um, 
Could you talk a little bit more about this uh, pyramid and um, just explain a little bit more about it? I trying to understand uh, its purpose and maybe if you could just talk about it. It seems a little small. I'm not sure what exactly is it doing. Could you just talk about it? Yes, uh, this is on the central pyramid and it's the little pyramid on top of the bigger one. And it's really just something aesthetic it's um, just a detail for a, a way to finish off all those pieces of metal coming together, the hips and the, the battens and all of that. It's just a more yeah. elegant way to finish it off than, than just having them meet. Thank you. Also, um, did you, could you talk a little bit more about, um, you dropped the, uh, the room that's on the, the elevation we're looking at right now, I think, is it the room on the right? You, You've uh, got that. You push yeah. it down into the ground more? Correct, so to more to... closely conform to the existing topography. Okay, and did you think about um, uh, dropping the main room down? Uh, uh, now you, you created a lot of stairs internally, which is, um, of course, a personal choice. Um, right. Wondering if you thought about that and um, perhaps dropping the main room down to not have so many stairs. Um, yes, we did look at that. And oddly enough, some of the initial information we reviewed showed that the existing house was actually a foot lower than the surrounding ground. That turned out to be an error on the information we were examining. And we certainly didn't want that. And so, um, if we did lower it, it would in fact do that. The surrounding ground, if you just put it on the site the way it is now, you would have water flowing towards the house. So you raised it up or you kept it? Correct. You're trying to keep it at grade? Um, really about a foot above grade. Mm, okay. Um, just a second. Uh, and then, um, I remember at the last time we reviewed, you had uh, the stonework was, um, there was a lot of different, you, you hadn't had it, com you hadn't completed it throughout the, uh, all the elevations and you had some areas with a lot of stone and some without any just, and, and you had, it was an earlier version. So you hadn't really worked all that out yet. So, um, so this, is, uh, this is now what you're thinking is best. Yes, um, to the right of the arrow there, um, from the latest plans from the civil engineer, we're looking at actually dropping that stone a little bit lower. So in proportion to the wall, you'll you'll actually see more of it. Oh, and where, you we're fine that? tuning that above the arrow there. So you want the, to lower where the, lower the stone that? would come down lower. So you wouldn't see the stone? No, it'll still be there. There'll just be more of it. How, how would it be, well, what would it be then if you uh, just, um, what are you proposing for that to be uh, right now? It looks like about what, 12, 15 inches or something? Yeah, about 12 inches. It'll grow another foot. So you would raise it up a foot? And we would actually down. pull it down a foot. The finished floor of that porch there would stay where it is. We would just have a few more steps right there. Okay, well, because the grade is actually lower. Correct. Okay, I see. Okay, those are my questions. Thank you. Could we see your proposed grading plan? Uh, sure. Um, let's see, Mary, I think that may be the last sheet. Yes, the last two sheets. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So again, in the guest unit on the right-hand side, um, the civil engineer has had to add um, earth to that area so that we don't drop down too low in that southern pyramid. And the same thing up to the upper left, we have a low sitting wall there, which we call the wave. And he actually had to do a lot of additional uh, adding uh, earthwork to this area 
to meet up with the great because it is steep over there. And cut and fill happen to balance out perfectly. About 300 cut, 300 fill. So what's, what, how, how tall is that little wall? You called it a seat wall. What's the maximum height on the wall? It's 18, uh, it's 16 inches on one side and um, up to 30 inches, well, a little bit lower than 30 inches on the other side. Could you, uh, by which you mean, I, I'm not understanding which side or which side we're talking about. So, okay, uh, so 16 inches on the pe the deck side. You've got it. And 30 inches on the downhill side. Exactly. So how is that working um, over there? Move your cursor to the left, please. Keep following the wall right there. How does that work? If there's, um, is, if there's it will a... blend, it'll blend into nothing actually at some point along there. Okay. The, so the, the outside the... of the wall, there won't be any drop, but the inside will still have 16 inches of rise. Okay. You can still sit on it comfortably. Well, yeah, I, I'm, I'm understanding that. That's fine. Um, I'm just not getting where the 30 inches comes in because I'm looking at, you know, you've got that 1170 going through there and that looks like you've got pretty much a five foot pad, if you will. Outside of the wall. Yeah. So it looks like the wall is just 16 inches tall. Can you scroll to the right, please? Thank you. And then, okay, so on this end, yeah, I can see the condition you're talking about because that's what, two treads there? Right. Okay. Seventy. All right, all right. Okay, so that makes a little sense. Um, all right. Um, I will have some questions about the landscape plan when we come back to the discussion. Um, but um, I can show that on my screen if, if, uh, if that's okay. Um, anybody else have any uh, quick questions? I know that wasn't exactly a quick question period, but anything else we need information about? Okay, Leah can, and Jonathan, can we do public comment please? Ken, do you have any public comment? Stefan, do you have any public comment? No. Okay. So Madam Chair, we have no request to speak. Madam Chair, we have no request to speak. Okay, then uh, let's go ahead and come back to the board. Um, and I'm probably gonna share my screen here real quick. If that's all right. Um, yep. Sure. Oh, come on. Okay, um, so I'm going to go back to the landscape plan here. I've got some questions or some comments about the landscape plan. And um, let's da, 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 da. I'll go back here, I'll look at the agenda real quick. Let's see if it'll download for me. Ha -ha. Let's see, because you are here today for Final. Final approval. Right. Okay. So um, I have some comments on the landscape plan that are. And I'm just going to start off because I got control of the screen. <laughs> um, so if if we look here, um, I think the BAR um, documents specify sizes, quantities and locations. Um, and while you've got a general location here, you don't have sizes and you don't have quantities for your plants. Um, 
and that's fine. Um, but that needs to be on there. Um, I notice on this plan, you're showing the removal of this oak over here at the end Correct. of the house. But there's Correct. a pine tree in here that you should probably also show. True. Um, and the other thing is, is that um, if you're taking out that oak, is the county requiring you to do a 10 to 1 mitigation? They are requiring us to do mitigation. I don't have in front of me the, the ratio. Uh, it's usually 10 to 1, and it's 1 gallons. Yeah, we have an arborist working on this, and it's going to be California live oak. Right. Um, I, you should show on the landscape plan where you're putting your mitigation. That should be a part right. of that landscape plan. We, yeah, Tina brought that up as well, and we yeah. told her we're working on that. Perfect. Um, Along with quantities. Yes. And so... Um, and um and size the irrigation <laughs> yes and the irrigation which you mentioned um and and along with the irrigation when you do that irrigation um it, you know if you're going to do drip that's fine just um you can actually do a drip plan very much like this and and give us the square foot takeoffs for the water use and everything and do your willow calcs from there um you should have no problem with that um but the uh, for final, you do need the quantities and sizes, you know, like one gallon, five gallon, whatever. Yeah, she in our conversation with her yesterday, she said not. She said, I'm not going to require you to have it for this meeting. But before she gives a land use permit, she said you'll have to pr pr produce it. Well, that's a little disingenuous because it's required as part of the BAR application as part of final. So, um, but come back to that in a minute. Um, does anybody else have any other comments? Cass, you want to start off? I'll wait till others speak first. Puck? Um, I, I just had a couple comments. I, I feel like um, the grading plan when you look at sort of the pad below that wall, um, it's fun, you know, yeah. Um, it, so I'm assuming that that is all gonna be hydro seed right, right up to the wall because that's all disturbed area. Okay, Except yes. Except for the little that actually that actually jives with another comment I had and that was with the with the, the thing with the pine is that however this works out, your hydro seeding and everything, everything should align. All the plans should be consistent throughout. Yeah, that that was my comment that you know there should be on the landscape plan areas or if you're noting hydro seed on the landscape plan, they um, are then you should indicate where those are and they should align with the grading plan. And um, I, I wondered too, it's hard for me to extrapolate, but um, that 24 inch live oak might be um, in, in jeopardy as well. I'm not sure if the civil was working around that guy or not. I can't really. He was tell so he's got a um, he's got something going on in here where right here see it i'm not sure what that indicates but i believe that that's, a, that's a fence oh not not that one the one further down the hill down um, here yeah mm -hmm. there is there's this a, one yeah um and um, and then the pool, I mean, this is just a comment that um, I know it frankly always makes sense to do a pool under a separate permit, but um, I was just curious how in terms of the structure of the house and the structure of the pool, how those are actually integrated. Um, but as you said, it's under separate permit. So I'll just remain curious. Okay. 
Um, Robin? Mm -hmm. Are you done, Puck? Yep. Okay, Robin? Uh, nothing to add. Uh, Alan? Uh, nothing to add, thank you. Lowell? Uh, nothing from me. Uh, Cass? Okay, um, can we go to the elevations? Yes, just give me two shakes. I had to set my phone to vibrate. That was my phone that was obnoxious there. Um, okay, I just have a few comments. I uh, this this height is what I, it's hard to read these little tiny numbers. What's the height of that building? Um, this is another thing that uh, Rob, could you show us some overall dimensions for these heights? There's a dearth of uh, information here as far as dimensions. There's it's really difficult Let's to see. That could be on the section. Well, it should be on your elevations and. Um, what do we so, have up there at the very top of the I, I, this? These are our comments. Just ah. let me try and get through. <laughs> okay, Cass. Yeah, it looks like it's uh, if I'm eighteen six. It looks like. Yeah, um, I, I would, I think that it the that it could be improved if it were lower. Um, I understand that maybe you're trying to emphasize the this this uh, central piece by making it taller, but I don't know that that is, um, uh, it, it already is uh, uh, the central piece regardless of the height. So I would like to see it lower. Um, I feel that the, um, the pyramid is um, kind of small. It just doesn't uh, seem to have a, um, a presence. I would probably make it bigger. Um, it just seems um, it just seems small. I guess I'll say that. Um, I think that in also, relation to the roof, you mean? Yes. Yeah. The proportions seem off. Um, Can I ask? Could, I, could you, sorry? Could you give me that comment again? I, I miss that the that the that the little detail. Uh, what is it called? You call it the the little. Uh, let's uh, call the, it a, a pyramid cap of the central yeah, pyramid roof. cap at the um, central building. Uh, seems uh, out of proportion, proportionately um, small. And I'm not sure it's needed at all either. Um, I think that the, it's, uh, the tower piece, the round piece uh, could be emphasized more if the other part of the building was uh, brought down, that piece could stay high. I just feel like there's an opportunity there. So these are just suggestions. Um, also, I remember at the last time uh, to even further emphasize that tower that if that were um, clad in the stone and then the other the balance of the building just had the wainscot, uh, I think that could be very beautiful. Um, okay. So just as a, as a comment again. Um, yeah, and so those I guess that's those are my comments. Okay, and there is lighting on the elevations, the lighting fixtures that were shown earlier. Yeah, and just I guess just to emphasize that the the wainscot, you know, before there were some areas where it was very tall, and then others where it didn't, it wasn't, uh, hadn't been applied yet. So I feel like this is kind of random feeling. I feel like if it was a band continuous around the entire house at one height. Uh, that that would be a, more effective. And then, as I said, consider, you know, that the tower itself could be fully clad all the way up and then uh, allowed to be the prominent, you know, a, a tower as, it, as I think is the intention here. Um, although I'm not sure. So okay. um, yeah, those are my comments. Thank you. Okay, anybody else have um, anything else to add? Okay. Um, I'm going to um, just kind of recap a little bit um, between the landscape um, and we talked about the trees and the erosion control and uh, seeding versus the um, graded area, all those kinds of things. Um, there, there just needs to be some um, tightening up of the drawing set so that everything um, is, is more nailed down. You know, um, as Rob mentioned, there's a, there are a few things that are just not quite tacked down. Um, and so all of those need to be addressed and kind of shown on the plans. 
Um, go ahead and show the Wello while you're doing it. Um, I did have one more comment um, uh, and a question for Rob. Let me just, uh, while I've got the elevations up, Rob, if you could ask, answer one question for me. Um, sure. Where uh, are the, do you have a plan that shows the location, a plan view that shows the location of the lights as well? Uh, yes, I don't, we've begun on that. I don't believe it's in this set. It would be E1, but I don't think that's in this set. Okay. Um, if I go to the floor pan here, can you identify where all the lights are for me? Um, let's see here. I, I'm trying to force you to do that. I'm making you do this right now because, well, it looks like actually they are here. Oh, good. <laughs> Okay, so it looks like there's one here at the porch, one here at this door, here on the back. Looks like there's two, well, third one on this corner by the door, right? Um, the garage, now I thought the garage had two on it as well, on the elevations. Let me check quickly. You're quite right. One on either column at the doors. At the sides. There okay. There. Okay. So um, I think that's it. I don't think there's any. Um, you basically just have them at doorways, and, and that's great. Um, I would say on your detail, if you could add, and no, I'm not going to make you add any, anything really outrageous. Could you add the spec for the lamp? Sure. And um, it should be between 2,700 and 3,000 Kelvin. That's right. what I'm going to look for. Um, and um, and I don't know if you're going to use a traditional a bulb as is kind of depicted and the lamp is kind of depicted in your cutaway here, which is fine. Or if you're going to use a more of an LED or something like that, but if you could also specify that, please. So basically, just kind of flesh out the specification on this for sure. us, so that we can go tick, got it. <laughs> um, that's what we're going to be looking for. Um, so that's that's what you do, um, guys. Uh, could we put this final on consent? Because he's got a he's got quite a laundry list, and there's a few things flapping in the wind. Or yes, do you want to I, take the final action today? I would like to see it final on consent. I think they're just yes. uh, quite a few little inconsistencies that would need to be wrapped up anyway. So yes. I don't think this is going to slow anything down. Alan, Robin? That sounds reasonable. Lowell? I, okay. I All right. Agree. So... Rob, I think what we'd like you to do is is tack down the rest of it. Um, we don't really have major comments. They're mostly fiddly things. Um, I think the substance of your design is there. Um, the only architectural comments you got were Cass's regarding the um, elevation. Um, I I would I'd concur with her um, in that, and I think the general consensus is that it does look a little odd that little pyramid thing you know it's it's it, i don't have any outright objection to it but it just doesn't quite fit and i think you can i think you can improve on it um and Cass gave you a whole bunch of ideas emphasizing the tower uh instead of that little roof because i'm not even sure anybody's really going to see it from you know anywhere really um certainly not next to the building, given the angle of repose. Um, so you have, you have a, a lot of suggestions there for how, how to deal with it, and we'll be looking for that. Um, I think this goes to the, you know, consistency across the drawings. Make sure that your drawings are showing whatever that final grading works out to be and how much of the stone you have, what Cass was calling the wainscot. Um, 
at, at that base, how much of that base, just make sure there's a consistency throughout all the drawings so that we can flip through them and go, yep, yep, matches, matches, matches. And uh, everything hangs together and, and we can just zip through it real quickly on, on, on consent. And, uh, and thank you for noting all of the uh, materials on the elevations. That's exactly what you're supposed to do, but I would appreciate some more um, information on the elevation on the on the elevations as to the heights. It's going to help the planner too. So when she goes to make her final determination, she puts it in the file. She can document that the you're you're meeting the hillside ridge line. So, all right. Very good. All right. Thank you very much. Nice presentation. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. Or I'm going to try and go back to my agenda. Maybe it is. Thank you. Uh, I was having issues earlier. All right, here we go. Um, so item number two, 21 bar 102, Midland School. Uh, Leah and Jonathan, if you could go ahead and um, get with the applicant, start them sharing. Um, and it doesn't appear we have any minutes for this item. So we'll go ahead and get them going. Hi all, I'm Adam Sharkey of Blackbird. I, I'm, I'll be sharing my screen for our presentation. Um, so if, if someone can allow that, I can share. Adam, you should be good to go. Okay, and um, just, as long, just make sure that uh, your drawings are the same set that was submitted. Good morning, Madam Chair and board members. My name is Heidi Jones. I'm the agent for Midland School. Uh, thank you for your time this morning. We're excited to present to you our concept plans um, for the project. I'm just gonna briefly summarize what our scope is for the requested CUP amendment for context. And then we'll pass this on to Christopher Barnes, the head of school for some brief comments and our plan presentation. So CUP, I mean, the Midland CUP um, amendment request um, considers um, several different upgrades to the campus. Really, there's a need to provide adequate facilities for the campus upgrades now that will last into the future. There's a need for some new buildings, infrastructure improvements, road work improvements, including fire access protection, et cetera. Um, you know, new housing for faculty, student dormitories, et cetera. Um, Adam will run through those specific components. Um, just for background, Midland's a very unique rural campus and it's had a CUP with the county since the 1950s. So as time does, there's always a need uh, to update that over time. So that is our, our current request. There is no operational changes proposed as part of the CUP amendment. It's uh, mostly all physical development and construction. So we look forward to your comments and we're available if you have any questions. going. Great. Uh, I want to thank you all for your time today. My name is Christopher Barnes. I'm the head of school of Midland. Midland um, has been in Santa Barbara County since the 1930s. We're in our 89th year. We're a co-ed grade 9 through 12, 100% boarding school um, up on Figueroa Mountain Road at the base of Grass Mountain, which you can see right there. Um, what's unusual about us is the students do all the work on campus. We grow about half our own food value every year. Um, we're deep stewards of the land that we're on. The majority of our 2,800 2, acre campus is under conservation easement with the Santa Barbara Land Trust, and we provide public access. Um, and we're deeply committed to the land and the place. Um, this, you know, what we're seeking here is really just updating and trying to tidy up uh, and really plan for our longer term future. Um, we really have to begin the process of renewing our campus, our infrastructure and our buildings, which we're really excited about. Um, and sort of evolving those facilities so that they're more fit to function and frankly, you know, modernized in appropriate ways. Although our campus is incredibly rustic and simple and we would like to keep it that way and have aspirations to continue to be a simple functional campus that our students can clean and maintain. Um, and, you know, we do want to add things like more shaded gathering spaces as the world gets a little, you know, gets uh, uh, warmer. Um, we, too, like so many entities, schools and institutions in the county are really quite desperate to continue to add um, housing for employees. 
Um, the housing crunch locally is really having a significant impact on our fundamental viability. Um, and so it's, you know, a significant portion of what we're seeking um, is the potential over the long term to expand our offerings with regards to housing our own employees as possible. Um, and when anything, I want to thank you for your time and I'll turn it over to Adam who can, I think, delve into more of the details. But thank you all for your time today. Thanks, Christopher. I'm Adam with Blackbird. Ken's here as well. Um, I think Ken's going to start us off and then uh, I'll, I'll be moving slides forward and uh, I'll jump in. Uh, we'll we'll kind of tag team that. Thank you. Um, this is Ken and Radke from, from Blackbird. We also have Stefan from Blackbird here. And um, Madam Chair, members of the board, thanks for having us here and for your work. Um, this is just an unbelievably uh, special, uh, meaningful, and um, uh, intriguing project. From you know, I would think from from your point of view and from ours as as a, as a design team, um, the you can see this long list of structures, which talks essentially and is an indicator of it's a it's an it's a constellation of small structures, many of which are old um, and perhaps a little too rustic, um, you know, by today's standards. And the, the way that, the, um, that this campus developed over time um, was uh, very practical and responsive to needs at the times um, that, that things were done. But as time has gone on, the, the need for order in this sort of ranch-like atmosphere has grown. So you can see this. 81,000 um, square feet with 78 buildings. Um, and we're going to remove, you know, a third of the structures and put back a, a little more than a third. Um, there's a gain of, of square footage, but it's mostly about the, that gain of square footage is mostly for um, faculty residences. And it's, um, although the number of residences will, will go up the sort of quality of them will go up drastically. So it's not just about quantity, it's really about um, appropriateness. I think this photo is very telling. You can see um, figure out Mountain Road over here, you've got a, a 500 foot sort of driveway um, and an entry over a bridge. And then you've got the, the sort of, um, let's stay on that picture just for a second. I think this is helpful for everyone, the big picture overview. You can see this constellation of, of, of structures and the play field here. It's notable that there's pasture land here and that there's actually agriculture that's operated by, this, by students mostly, um, and they grow their own food. So the kinds of um, programs that are happening here about um, self-reliance as well as reliance upon each other are just great lessons for all of us. And it's been really meaningful. Um, another important aspect of, of this overview, I think, as you can see, all of this back country, if you will, for the school is preserve land, um, 2,800 acres, which backs up the kind of like front territory here of 233 acres. Um, so I think with that, then we could um, move to the next slide. You can see this is the bridge whereby you actually then enter campus. Um, you can see this, you know, this just, just give, give me a second on that slide, Adam. Um, this, you know, the road, this is the nature of the campus now. This is the entry and this entry is, um, although modest is perhaps again, a little too modest and not orienting um, to visitors enough. Next. This is just the kind of, um, you know, beautiful um, improvised gathering with shade here that happens um, when, you know, when there's, when there's an event or a graduation. Um, and that's the steps of the, of the dining hall there. So everything's on a very personal and, and intimate scale. This is the chapel, just an, an incredibly um, inspiring small space. You can just see how rustic this is. There's, you know, literally sun coming in through more than just the walls, but through holes in the walls. Um, and that means air and, and so forth. This is a science classroom. Um, so it's, it's all just so unique. Um, the content of what's learned 
is, you know, of course, um, science is, is kind of the same for all of us, but the way in which it's learned um, in, in this just really, really simple, um, beautiful form and format is, is something that um, we, we need to update. There's a kind of like a lot of deferred maintenance, but we don't want to mess it up with, with change. The, you know, the site planning here and the, and the atmosphere is basically, in essence, it has been a response to what's there. So oak trees and so forth, those, those stay. And plantings are oftentimes um, native, native plants and volunteers and so forth. Uh, next. These structures, again, um, just poetic in their, in their simplicity. In the back right there, you can see is actually the um, quote unquote gym, which is, you know, just a large um, open covered, covered space. Next. This is really the heart of what's happening here, um, which is kids being themselves learning, learning in, in just a completely different and unique environment that, you know, um, our office, we're lucky we work with quite a lot of schools, but we've never, ever, um, seen a, a place like this where it's, it's really about community. And again, the sense of, of uh, building self-reliance and reliance on each other. Next. So if you get into the existing site plan, you can kind of tell even just by this overview, um, there is this constellation which feels somewhat inscrutable. Next, um, let's zoom in. You can see that the, um, these hatched, um, structures are the ones that are sort of older, um, perhaps in wrong places, and that would be then removed and, and replaced. And you can see where there are kind of groupings that, that might make sense in certain areas. Um, you can also see here that um, in, in, in our campus planning work, oftentimes we're working with older road networks and trying to um, consolidate the roads, um, devote less actual surface area of the campus to roads while still providing good road access to things and then consolidating the social and pedestrian networks. So this kind of like synaptic network of, of roads um, is really wants to be, um, you know, uh, cleaned up. So if you go next, here is the, the you know, CUP proposed concept, you know, um, whereby um, when a car would arrive from, from across the bridge, um, there's, there's a sense of arrival and some parking spaces here. And um, many cars for visitors might just um, stop there. Um, this, you know, middle of the school now can in essence be car free and that's, that's really important um, sort of to our, to our modern sensibility, also just for practical things like dust control and uh, safety and so forth. Um, next, I think we've got a, a, a diagram that helps understand, um, you know, in campus planning, a lot of what, what we're trying to do is, is to build the social networks. And a lot of that happens through courtyards. And then we're also trying to accommodate um, visitors, especially who won't know this place by heart. Um, and so um, the cues that we're able to give the visitors in, in this sort of constellation that's developed um, with lots of lots of small pieces is subtle. And we're not using um, paved walkways and, and arches and, and these kind of like traditional institutional campus um, type cues, we're using um, spatial social landscape cues um, and responding to, to the existing. The sensibility here at Midland is um, it's a boarding school. And when you think boarding school, you think again of these sort of institutions with, with um, you know, sport coats and, and stuff, or, you know, this kind of old fashioned, you know, idea. Um, and, and really this is, this is simultaneously modern and rustic. You can see this, this purple um, central core, which is, is really in essence, classes, admin, dining hall, academic center, 
and then you've got kind of um, one, two main areas of, of residential. And um, currently um, mostly divided sort of boys one, one end, girls another end. This sense of, the sense of, of what happens over time accommodating sort of non, non-binary you know, um, approaches to all of, all of our interactions um, in terms of gender. Will, will develop over time. And then um, just traditional sort of, I, I have athletics and, they, and the campus has horses and we've got the faculty housing, which are kind of um, interspersed amongst these structures, but then also then um, supporting the, the sort of boundaries. Um, next. I think again, I might hand off to, to Adam here, but you'll see with each project in essence, um, the, the sub zones, the sub areas of the campus then get tuned up by sort of um, gentle replacement of uh, deferred maintenance type um, you know, structures that need replacing. And if you think about this place kind of as a a constellation residence for an entire community or a very, very small school, then um, you know, each of these um, projects that Adam will describe kind of defines um, a space in support of the whole school. I'll, I'll, I'll take over and just take you through, there's sort of three main zones of campus that Ken's already identified. Upper Yard uh, is one of the residential kind of dormitory and, and even saying dorm is a little funny. We'll see dorms at Midland are these cabins that are uh, really cool, rustic, small scale uh, and personal. Upper Yard had the most sort of needed change in terms of its organization of, of the layout. You can see here, this is an aerial photo over the existing area. Um, these are the existing Upper Yard cabins. They're single wall, in essence, sort of cedar log um, cabins that, um, again, in a sort of uh, arranged in an improvised nature over time, they're adjacent to the field, um, and there is some open and flat area that backs up to this sort of oak woodland hillside. So it's got um, great proximity in campus. Um, what's Midland has has worked with us and, and uh, internally for a long time studying this area. The cabins in their current layout don't support, you know, a, a social cohort grouping. Um, um, many of them are arranged sort of in a drainage kind of edge along what Soam Canyon is called. Uh, and the ideal site and grouping for these cabins is really um, more kind of overlooking the athletic field and with better kind of flat, um, close connections to middle yard of campus. Um, so that has the most sort of structural change and removal to sort of update update these uninsulated, um, small, slightly too small, um, misarranged kind of cabins. There's one faculty residence and there's sort of a rustic um, hillside amphitheater that formed the sort of opportunity site for really replacing about, you know, this half of the student body area where they live. This upper yard concept focused on the successful elements of lower yard, we'll see in a bit, but of the basic idea is that these paired, paired cabins, each cabin is a double room, um, trying to keep them not um, overly um, joined together so that there's good light and air on three sides of every cabin, really trying to arrange it around three high functioning sort of passive um, uh, open space courtyards that they can look out onto. These groupings work with the student kind of cohort. Seniors are divided up as, um, sort of residential sponsors in each of the courtyards. So there really needs to be three for the, the first three grades, um, working with the campus, replacing not only the cabins, but the bathroom. The bathroom is actually within their current CUP and, and that's um, already underway. This idea of trying to um, limit the number, previously there were four separated bathroom structures. It's a lot of extra plumbing and building area, consolidating those. So there's sort of three bathrooms in one structure. Um, that is in close proximity to these courtyards. That's the new grouping. Over at the far right is a replacement sort of faculty residence, which is actually a duplex. It's about the same footprint as the previous, but to get, again, increase in faculty housing. Overall character of making these courtyards has been thought through with these sort of simple 
simple roof forms. This is what's already under construction, this sort of um, bathhouse structure where you'd have long covered porches, um, one on each side of the building, welcoming. Uh, so let's turn that off. These are the proposed cabin layout, very, very simple. Um, I think the one main change from what they have is a little bit more space and a, and a larger covered porch so that students can sort of be in a covered outdoor space, look on to other, other cabins. Adam, could you just yep. pause for a second? Mm -hmm. Leah? Yes. Okay, so um, Adam, when we first started, I had said that uh, we needed to concentrate on um, showing us the plans that had just been submitted, what had yep. been submitted. Um, I'm not finding in the package that was submitted any of those uh, architectural, the, um, the perspectives and such that you were just showing us. They were lovely, but I didn't find them in the package. Have I made an error? No, I think those are internal as just sort of getting the CUP plans together. So. Um, the, the restroom one is, is already under construction, so it's just trying to provide context. Um, but no, we have, the CUP plans, we didn't submit renderings. Okay, um, and I'm speaking um, specifically here for the CBAR package. So um, what I have, what the planner has provided to us does not include those. Um, what I have is uh, plans, Midland School concept CBAR, 20 August, uh, 2021 PDF. And then I have several other supporting documents. Um, Leah, given that this is conceptual, how do you, how should we proceed with this? Cause I'm a little outside of the comfort zone here cause we're limited to what was submitted. Madam chair, um, normally yes, we would be, some, we would be uh, bound to what was submitted prior to the meeting. Um, I think that because the majority of these are just photos and illustrations of um, material that were already submitted in the packet in a different form. And um, I think mainly presented to get you guys acquainted with the site and what's proposed. I think that we should be okay. Um, but I don't think that it's something that's allowable at any other level of review other than this first conceptual. Okay, so I'm gonna ask my board does anyone have any problem with them proceeding, um, given that there's going to be information that hasn't been submitted? I, given um, that we're at this conceptual, conceptual level, level. Mm -hmm. for a master plan, I, I don't have any problems with um, this information that frankly gives us. I, I agree. It's much more informative than, than limiting it to what was submitted. And I would like to see it, but I just want to make sure that everybody's comfortable with this. Well, yeah, as usual, I'd like to see what was only what was uh, submitted. Uh, I would agree with Alan. Okay. I'm fine with what's being submitted. Uh, with what we're seeing or limiting it to strictly what was submitted, Robin? what they're showing, I'm fine with that. Okay. Um, I think other than that upper yard, which had the sort of most change um, chair that the rest is, is uh, basically all the, other than some photography to help see the existing situation, mm -hmm. it, it's all what's been submitted. <clears throat> yeah, I've been following along and looking at the plan side by side on screens. And, and as far as I can tell, aside from a few text words um, and enlargements, it is what has been submitted. Um, the main thing was um, the um, perspectives that you were showing us. Um, um, uh, I'm assuming that since this is now becoming, because we're recording this, I am assuming that you would have no objection, Blackbird would have no objection, the applicant would have no objection to submitting your presentation in a digital form to the county? Certainly, that would be fine. Okay. Um, can I have a consensus with the board that we can let them go ahead and um, proceed or are, are we completely and totally uncomfortable with that? I recommend we proceed. 
Well, I think- I, it, it, right My- now it's it's um, Cass and Allen are the two that are are. Oh. Can I ask you a question? Yes, please. And this is just a you know, procedural. If if anybody's going to make any kind of decision based on information that was not put into the packet, I think that's the very definition of the answer. No. Correct. That's where I'm sitting too. However, um, this is a concept review, and there is no action taken today. Um, Bethany. Yes. Um. Given the fact that I, I, I really, uh, this is just me personally, although I, I appreciate the additional information, um, I, I know the existing conditions really well. And I, I don't, I, I think um, given the, the um, that this is a, a long-term commitment and we certainly don't want to create any hiccups for the applicant down the road. You know, I don't have a crystal ball. Um, I I think um, after hearing um, re- having uh, Cass and Alan remind me, thank you. Um, I think we should stick with the submitted. Uh, All right, packet. Um, Adam. If you could um, share your screen and, but limit yourself to um, just what was submitted. Um, I know that kind of derails your presentation, but it does keep us in line with the law. Um, We've been caught out several times on this issue and don't wish to (laughs) go into that. Um, I think if you open up the PDF of what was submitted um, and then work with that i think that would be excellent sure we uh, the at least on the screen maybe just this is the submitted plan yes, for the proposed that's correct i'm and looking it's, at it's, it it's zoomed in a little i think this might be more more easy to see for people if i go to the pdf it's going to be zoomed out farther but well um, you can zoom in on the pdf as you present um, but uh, I think everybody would be very much more comfortable if you use just the presented PDF and then sure. zoomed in and out as, and used your cursor. Let me um, try to pull that up. Hold on one minute. And, 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 and just to prevent this uh, from happening in the future, if you had submitted the presentation in advance and, and it had been put in the, the box and had been available for the public, we wouldn't have an issue with you showing it to us. So that's one way to work around that. Sure. Uh, One minute. Let me just make sure this is the right. And incidentally, I'm I'm not choosing to pick on you today. This has been an ongoing issue with a lot of applicants and um, we're having to kind of educate people as we go. And I was enjoying the presentation, by the way. <laughs> it was just like, we just got too far afield. All right, these should be opening. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. So the other areas of campus, just we've covered upper yard, which is the area of the most sort of Thank building you. building location change. Middle yard is this sort of area that Ken has already described mostly. So it has a number of the existing academic buildings core, the dining hall is here. There's two main sort of opportunity areas. The school does need to add modest amounts of academic program space uh, over the coming years. Uh, This area where 105A is and where 109A, this replaces an existing small structure. These form the two main academic new building areas. And then this is main house, which is the main uh, administrative core that gets a modest addition on the back. Um, Sort of flanking as a new um, barn uh, pavilion, which so there's an existing barn, um, which is in this location. As Ken was saying, the goal is to really relocate the roadway area to not cut through what, what is really a heart of campus zone. Um, limit that to not have auto circulation through it, 
have that still work for fire access vehicle deliveries and circulation, but around the back of, of a new kind of barn pavilion. Uh, we'll show that in the elevations and, and plans in a second, and then a small little admission structure. So this um, maintains sort of the, the context of open courtyard circula and pathway circulation for academic spaces, but takes this barn area that was formerly their horse program zone. And um, in recent years, they've been able to, um, I'll show it's way out here. The horse program is now out in the outer edge, east northeastern edge of campus, which has sort of freed up the center of campus to be for more student uh, supporting uses. So if we look at that, uh, let's see, the barn. So in terms of um, A2.1 through 2.3, so all the proposed structures and their, their elevations for this sort of CUP level, um, you can see the goal in these new academic buildings, if we just zoom in, is to have, um, a, a, again, these sort of low slung, um, simple buildings, good indoor outdoor connections, this building form actually works to create a courtyard around an existing oak to remain, a lot of kind of covered porches and decks to give good shaded indoor outdoor space, modest additions on the back of existing existing buildings to remain. And then if we jump to the barn, this again, the, the barn, this follows the existing kind of form of the barn structure. Um, that barn structure um, is not suitable for rehabilitation or reuse. It doesn't meet any form of code for use for human occupation. It was designed you know, and, and done long ago for horses, but a new idea of an open air area that's sort of got a high open ceiling could be used for um, presentations, studying, gatherings, um, and some support restrooms and facilities are what's sort of in this um, proposed barn structure. That constitutes kind of middle yard improvements in this sort of main area of campus. The remainder, um, lower yard has the least amount of change. Um, what's going on now is a sort of um, reconstruction, formerly the bathroom. There are two bathroom structures. One is getting renovated. One is getting replaced with a new one to the south. It's the former one was here and that's creating again, trying to support these sort of outdoor courtyard open space uses. There's an existing open field further south that is an ideal spot for um, both two new residences that are within the current CUP that are underway and then adding this idea of a duplex plan, which again sort of uh, reduces the number of new structures on site and provides two faculty homes in one sort of um, branch style house. If we go to the elevations, it's on this one. This is the, the sort of floor plan. Um, so many of the sort of net new structures are this faculty duplex plan. And this is the basic approach of kind of, it doesn't look like a side to side mirror image of a plan. One's a three bedroom residence and one's a two bedroom to work with faculty, um, families of different sizes. It presents sort of a front entry versus a side entry, large covered outdoor porches and sort of private side and backyards with a, with a public front. In a residential campus, students are often um, coming and, and visiting faculty. so trying to have a modest um, uh, but highly functional, well-shaded sort of um, plan is the approach for the faculty uh, residences. So if we look at those, they're both in this lower meadow zone as well as in the upper yard area that we've seen um, on this outer edge, this is a duplex structure. And then to the east of the athletic fields, there's two more proposed. So there's a couple opportunity sites for additional faculty residences that are uphill. Um, and these um, uh, are best suited for smaller single family residences that are just one level, but where possible down in the flat zones and supporting student uses have been these sort of faculty residences. That um, is the primary amount of new building program. As Ken mentioned, there's some faculty housing removals that are in sort of tough site areas or to try and open up campus circulation networks and pathways. The overall project um, plans and elevations, I try it at CUP level to kind of show all these project elements 
um, and get the school set up for, for viability for the coming years. I think that's the, the bulk of the, the project description. Ken, is there any kind of closing thoughts or aspects of this to mention? No, I, I think that covers it pretty well. I mean, uh, you, you, can, you can see again, you've got this um, distributed decentralized constellation. Um, everything, including like the dorm is, a, you know, a two person dorm room backed up to another two person dorm room and that's a cabin. Um, so that's the kind of the granularity of this. It's all about um, just sensitive placement of things and creating a, a flow of space, sense of community and order. And, um, and again, it's, it's a sort of an organic approach to a very organic, um, you know, uh, development that has happened over many decades and will continue to, to happen um, ever so gently out in this sort of glorious isolation here. That's it for us. We're, we're available to answer any questions. Perfect. Thank you very much um, to your entire team. That was an excellent presentation. Um, uh, before I um, call for public comment, do we have any um, clarification questions um, uh, from the board before we go to public comment and board deliberation? I, I just had a, a few questions. Um, um, with all of um, this development, what type of um, septic systems is the county requiring on a project now out here? So the, I can answer that, I think, and Heidi jump in if as needed. Um, the school's been in operation for uh, a, a long time. They have a, um, an existing distributed um, septic tank and leach field system. Um, with this, uh, these improvements, which um, generally aren't involving these new restroom projects sort of already have gone through environmental health and, and gotten their clearance. Um, so there'll be point-wise improvements. The capacity in terms of overall student occupant load is not changing on campus. The, it's a highly distributed rural site. So these new faculty residences would continue to work with environmental health and get um, individual um, septic tank kind of leach field areas in their specific locations. Okay, and um, this plan has already been uh, vetted, I'm sure by the fire department. Yeah, so we've been in, and the school has been in constant communication with the fire department over um, many years. Uh, there's part of this um, is making sure access is provided and there's some sort of situational road widening uh, um, while being mindful of, of grading and oak trees. Um, there's also uh, tanks, there's a stored water system that the campus has and will be um, improving as part of the CEP in terms of the amount of stored water system to power sprinklers um, and fire flow for hydrants for the buildings. Okay, thank you. Anybody else on the board? All right, um, I personally don't have any questions, so. Um, I think I'm going to ask Leah, do we have any uh, public comment? Madam Chair, we have no request to speak. Okay. Adam, if you could keep your screen up and um, as we go through and talk about some things, we may ask you to bring up um, a specific plan. Um, if you could just kind of follow sounds, along. Sounds great. Yep. I'll, really I can appreciate it. Whatever you need. <laughs> Thank you so much. Because you know your plans better than I do. Um, so uh, let's let's go to the board for comment. Puck, do you want to start first? Sure. This is um, probably um, should have been in the questions, but um, given all the new um, sort of reconfiguration of things, which I think is terrific. I I love this plan. Um, 
my children went to family school. So I'm, <laughs> I was one of the first people at family school with the outhouse. So come a long way. <laughs> um, but with all of this new reconfiguration and potential re-landscaping, even though um, plants are, are, are natives or drought tolerant, they do require a fair amount of water in this um, kind of situation to um, actually become established. And so I, I would just encourage you to be really mindful of how of the infrastructure that new landscaping um, might require. Um, and I'll, I'm really excited to see what the uh, landscape plan uh, will be, and especially um, for the sort of commons areas in the um, uh, different um, residential areas of the school. Um, and I think um, the, the buildings are, are very um, mindful of the architectural history of, of Midland and how low key it is. And I really appreciate that, that you're, you're staying with basically the original kind of hands-on style of, of the campus. I think that's really important. I would probably like to see I mean, there were some shade areas, but I, I think um, it might be a good idea to have like, oh, in the barbecue area or event area, just another layer of um, gathering areas that are under more permanent shade than are, are shown on this plan. But, you know, this is a, a much, um, more sort of global picture of what you, what you're doing, but I think that the next level, it's it's just you know in the last well let's see, <laughs> forty five years that I've been coming out there, it's um it's gotten way hotter, way way hotter. So um, I would just encourage as much shade as possible. Thank you. Okay, um, Cass. Yes, thank you. Um, I want to thank, uh, thank the team for this uh, presentation. And I just wanna speak um, just big picture uh, about it. Um, I know this team and how skilled and sensitive they are. So I have a lot of confidence that uh, they will do a, a really beautiful job. And I appreciate that. And I also know this place. Um, I like Puck. I have a my stepson went to family school, and um, and my my son went to the uh, sister school, uh, Santa Barbara Middle School. And uh, so I'm very familiar with this place, and I understand the power of this type of schooling and this approach, and. Um, how important it is to the uh, development of a uh, social responsibility that these kids learn by being in nature and being in, um, you know, where nature really is, is and, and taking care of each other where the older, the older kids take care of the younger kids, all take responsibility for each other. So I, I just understand how, how important really the school, um, basically saved my son. <laughs> um, so I want to really encourage, you know, I know it's, it's a very difficult thing uh, to respond to current codes. And yet, how do you keep this incredible um, natural environment that's so connected to the earth, the funky factor, you know, we're losing, uh, we're losing these kinds of places and it's so, so important, you know, to be able to go back to somewhere that, that wasn't all perfect, you know, that, that did have this funky aspect to it where you, where you get the, the dirt in your fingernails, you know, 
Um, so I, I understand this gentle replacement, but just want to highlight how important, you know, to really step back and think, and I know that this team again is very, very thoughtful. So I know that they will, but how to not get gentrified, you know, and how not to be, um, uh, I guess, swayed by, you know, sort of making things uh, beautiful in a particular way uh, when maybe, maybe a little bit more funky. How do we preserve that unique magic, the uninstitutional, I'll call it, the uninstitutional character um, while dealing with the uh, termites and such? How, how do you do that? It, it's not easy. And then how do you do the insulation but still keep that? So um, it, 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 I understand as an architect myself, it's very, very difficult. Um, I would just, just wanted to say these, uh, these things um, and also to you know, really remember about at least what I recall when my son was at this age of um, you know, mixing the kids up, you know, not separating them into uh, their own uh, classes, but that having them all mixed up together so that they can actually be uh, better able to um, watch out and care for each other. So I would just say, um, you know, try to resist too much, quote, you know, quote, too much. Just, you know, the more, the, the less development, the more environment is what I always say, the more garden, the more natural space we have with the less development and embrace the environment and the dirt, you know, embrace the dirt. And, um, and I'll just leave it at that. I, 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 like I said at my beginning that I have, um, I so admire the um, principles of this school and I admire this team. So I just am gonna be the voice to always be reminding to step back and um, try, sometimes we get more with less and try to keep it from getting too uh, perfect or institutional in character. Thank you. Okay, uh, Robin. Um, I'm also a former family school parent and I think the plans are very mindful of the rural character of Midland School. And I echo Puck's recommendation for more shaded gathering areas. I think that's gonna be really important as things heat up. And that's it for me. Okay, uh, Lowell. Uh, thank you. I, I'm uh, really very appreciative of the school and the uh, architects work on this to date. I think it's going to be exciting to see this go forward. And uh, I think the beginning is uh, very interesting how they've uh, taken the campus and they're making it much better in a simplistic form and it's going to be very exciting so thank you to all okay and alan i've got nothing to add to what the lol said okay um i think actually um the everybody's um uh, spoken to, uh, at great length to the fact that um there's been a wonderful, um, I'd almost call it delicacy of touch as far as the, the site planning and, and working with it. And, and, and I too, as have others on the board spoken about, um, not losing that inherently intrinsic value that is Midland School. Um, and I don't know if you call it the funkiness or you call it the sense of place or whatever you call it. I, I think the architects and the design team and the applicant are quite aware of what that is. Um, and uh, really looking forward to see where you go with it from here. Um, the only thing that um, I would add is that as we move forward, um, if you could please be sure that um, if you're gonna do a presentation or anything like that, that you go ahead and submit that so that we have it um, and then can, you know, get the whole benefit of uh, uh, that put together kind of this. And I, I wanna say you did a great job at, at coming back to the, the drawings here. Um, 
and it was very clear and um, I understood what was going on and there's a lot to take in. So um, looking forward to next time. Thank you very much on a, a great presentation and a wonderful project. Um, I don't think we have anything else. Um, how, how do we want to see the, you guys, uh, what is your, um, maybe Heidi can answer this. What is your expectation for when you'd come back to us? <clears throat> My understanding, and perhaps Nicole can remind you, me if I'm incorrect, um, but for the CEP master plan, we would get, um, you know, your feedback on this conceptual design and proceed with eventually a director level decision on the project. Mm -hmm. And then as each phase um, comes through the follow-up permit process um, over time, we would come back to uh, your board and, and through the follow-up permit process for preliminary and final on each of those specific phases. Okay. Nicole, is that your understanding? That sounds accurate, but Heidi, I would say confirm with, with Tina. Mm -hmm. that. Or is that who your planner is? Yes. Confirm with your planner on their the process they expect to follow. Yeah, will do. Thanks. Okay. So that sounds like um, you wouldn't be coming back to us until you, you're ready to start breaking the project out into chunks of, um, I, I say, build out. Is that correct? Yeah, we will confirm that. There may be a, a form, more formal process that needs to happen for uh, the CUP, but I'll, I'll check back with Tina and uh, we will return if we need to. Okay. If, if there is a, if they need a um, overarching action more mm -hmm. than just the review, um, then I'm going to guess that probably what would happen if they need a preliminary action from us and then a final um, of of the whole overall arching plan, then what we would do is we would take it uh, to a preliminary level in front of our board. Um, and then, but at that point, we wouldn't actually take the action. We'd probably send it to the uh, decision maker, the other decision maker, director. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The director would take their action and then it would come back to us and we'd formalize our preliminary and final actions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Okay, well, well, we, we, we wait to see um, how you return to us. So keep us Great. in the know. Thank you, Chair and, and board members. Appreciate all the comments. And um, it's nice to hear how, how well Midland is known to you all. <laughs> so that's, that's good. Um, yes, it definitely is a part of the fabric of the community of the Valley here. Okay. Um, doesn't sound like we have any other business. Um, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Can I have a second? Second. Thank you, Puck. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks all. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. See you next time. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Have a good month, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.